Good morning, people watching Miss 65, Lisa Boyce. Let me give you a verse of scripture. It is actually out of Romans 12, 2. And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, in order to do that, let me give you experience. Get into the word. I get people writing me every day. Every day. Saying. They feel disconnected. They feel lost. They feel this. Word of advice. Satan plays on your emotions. Satan plays on your feelings. We walk by faith. We don't walk by feelings, folks. We walk by faith in God. That's where, that's the difference. Satan will use your emotions. And he will use the fact that you're not feeling anything. He always does. It starts with the mind. You renew your mind by getting into the word and getting into prayer. Just some advice. That's all. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. That's why we're saved, how we're saved, and why we're kept saved. It's only through his blood. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves. <laughs> not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus, protected by the blood of Jesus, Rapture ready, which is going to happen literally at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you, and change you if you let him. Again, get into his word. Talk to him. It's called prayer. Yeah, talk to him. That's what he wants. He wants to dine with you. He wants to commune with you. If you let him. It's not hard, folks. But you can't go by feelings. This is not a feel-good type of thing. This is a walk by faith. Trusting in him. Holy trusting in him. By faith. Let me give you this article. It came in this morning off of the Times of Israel. So, Israeli tanks. I got some news coming in about Russia as well. Israeli tanks move deeper into Rafah, Palestinians say. As, listen, 450,000 people flee. So this is getting, they're moving into Rafa wholeheartedly now on the 76th day of Israel's anniversary. Isn't that something? Yeah. IDF says it's looking into UN car hit in active combat zone. Also, battles continue in Rafa in North Gaza. Dozens of gunmen Eliminated. So, Israeli tanks forged deeper into eastern Rafa on Tuesday, reaching some residential districts. I just saw a cat go by. I don't know whether you saw it or not, but I did. Reaching some residential districts in the southern border city where more than a million people had been sheltering after being displaced due to the war against Hamas in Gaza. So, um, the tanks advanced this morning into um, 
these uh, neighborhood. I can't pronounce the name of the neighborhood. So they are in the streets inside the buildup area and are uh, they are there's clashes going on. So there's videos here of this also. And it says in a roundup of, of his activities, the IDF said his forces had eliminated several armed cells in close quarter fighting on the Gaza side of the Rafa border, crossing with Egypt. It goes on to say in the east of the city, it said it had destroyed cells of gunmen and a launch post from where missiles were being fired at IDF troops. The latest fighting in Gaza came as Israel marked a, uh, Independence Day with a subdued events in the shadow of October 7th and the seven month old war. It is seven months today. Well, seven months on the 7th, but you know, seven. People argued with me about that because how did you come up with that kind of math? <laughs> Says it right there in this article. See? <laughs> Israel's international allies and aid groups have repeatedly urged against a ground incursion into refugee packed Rafa, warning of a potential humanitarian catastrophe. So they say. Israel says it is acting to evacuate civilians ahead of moving into new areas. It says a, Ra a Rafa operation is necessary as part of the effort to eliminate Hamas's remaining operational battalions. CNN reported overnight that the U.S. believes Israel had an has enough troops just outside Rafa to launch a full ground operation. The report citing two senior administration officials said the Biden administration is unsure if Israel has made the decision to move ahead with a ground invasion of the city. It looks like they already did. They've already gone in. <laughs> it's already there. They're already there. It says Israel has urged residents of some neighborhoods in the city, which the IDF has called the last major Hamas stronghold in Gaza, to leave. They've been telling them to leave over the past week. The United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees says that around 450,000 Palestinians have left Rafah since then, as the IDF has escalated its operations in the southernmost Gaza city. Also, Tuesday, the Israeli military responded to the death of a United Nations employee and injury of another in southern uh, Gaza, Gaza, um, Rafa, the previous day, saying that the pair were hit in an active combat zone. But further details were under investigation. So in response to a query, the IDF said it received reports that two members of the United Nations Department of Safety and Security were hit while driving in the Rafah area. According to the UN spokesman, the pair were driving to the European hospital in southern Gaza when one of the staffers was hit. So... Um, It says the UN has not cast blame for the incident. Monday's incident marked the first time the United Nations International Employee was killed in a Gaza war. The Army said Tuesday that more than 100 targets were struck by Israeli Air Force fighter jets, drones, and helicopters across the Gaza Strip over the past day. So the IDF said troops um, taken out several sales of gunmen in close quarter combat in eastern Rafah 
and located weapons. So they're going in rather deep. Let me see what else came out. Hold on just a second. Okay. Um, hold on a minute. There's something is coming out. Hold on one second. Um, so the world court. Now this came out too. So the world the world court is going to hear South Africa's demand to stop Israel's Rafa offensive this week. So the Netherlands, I guess the Hague, the International Court of Justice in the Hague said it would hold hearings Thursday and Friday over South Africa's request to impose emergency orders on Israel to stop the Rafah offensive. The top UN court will hear lawyers from South Africa Thursday, followed by Israel's response the next day. I can't wait to hear what their response is going to be. Can't wait. This is going to be interesting. So the, so the South Africa, South Africa's demand. You know what's funny? You got the world's biggest wars going on in South Africa right now. But yet, little old Israel tries to defend itself. And this is what happens. You still think we have time left on this earth? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Time is ticking. We're out of time. Because now with everything that happened, especially Friday with Palestine, it's winding. It, it, it's over. It's over. It is officially over. So. I'm going to link this article. This is also off the Times of Israel, by the way, about the uh, world court to hear South Africa's demand to stop. Why do they not want these people to go over into Rafah? I got an idea why. They're going to find a lot more in there, in Rafah, than meets the eye. And I think some things are going to be exposed. I think, uh, yeah, I think some things are going to be exposed. Now South Africa wants them to stop. You know why? Because it's part of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's where they're headquartered at, in Rafah. You expose that, you expose all kinds of interests that the U.S. has invested in that, that South Africa has invested in that. Probably half of your rogue nations do too. It's part of the Muslim Brotherhood, and they don't want that thing dismantled. They're going to expose evil, and the demons don't want it exposed. That's what it's about. I'm going to link this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.